You know, when I look at a company's organizations uh, around the world, um, around the topic of continuous improvement, um, every single organization I've ever worked with, worked for, or supported is always looking for a better way of doing things. Always looking for improvement across the board in every category of what they do. And it's the same for uh, German companies that I've worked at, like Deutsche Bank and Battlesmann, uh, American companies like EMC and Dell Computer, where I was general manager, um, and especially for Japanese companies. Um, I ran Hitachi in Germany for a while, and, um, and we all know about the, the history of Toyota. So I think our striving for continuous improvement has become an innate element of every single organization around the world. And we are truly dedicated to finding the how of continuous improvement because it is not just important for success. For many organizations, it's important for survival. So let's get started on the path to continuous improvement. I like that. When we look back at the last 20, 30 years of the improvement arena, you know, especially everything that came out of the lean management world, and, and we mentioned Toyota a while ago, um, there's been a lot of methods and processes and tools uh, brought together in the course of the years for continuous improvement. And we have done a lot. We have brought efficiencies to bear, productivity levels that we haven't had before, and companies really, really blow away the numbers game, even now in the continuous crisis that the world has been in since 2008 almost, you know? Um, but I think that in many regards, we're starting to hit the boundaries of where continuous improvement has been able to take us. We're hitting the limits of what normal reorganization and process optimization can get us. So now the how is moving away from process and structure and moving to the most important asset that companies have, which uh, are our people. And if we could find out the how of activating our human potential in all of these organizations, we would start going significantly beyond anything the continuous improvement community has ever achieved before. And that how is probably the most exciting and interesting how that we have ever had. When we ask ourselves the question of what makes the difference, and how some of the world-class organizations have leapt above and beyond their competitors in their markets. It's probably been a dedication and commitment, not to the process, but to the philosophy. The philosophy goes deeper. Philosophy gets you into the cultural space of what it truly means to live what you believe in. And those companies around the world that have transformed their markets in the course of the last 50 years, have always been great examples of believing in the spirit of what they represent more than anything else. In any of those examples, Toyota led the way in the automobile industry. Apple has blown away the world in the electronics industry pretty much, you know. Uh, the whole internet where space from the valley in America have redefined markets by believing in their philosophy of being better every day beyond everything else. I think that the paradigm shift that's about to happen is that now it won't be about hardware, software, or internet wear. It's going to be about human wear. And the new pioneers that become world class at taking care of the people in and outside of their organizations more than everything else. It becomes a philosophy and a culture that they believe in so strongly that they would get, give everything to make it a reality. Those pioneers are going to be the examples for all of us to strive for in the next 50 years.